I'm about to show you why you have nothing to worry about when it comes to physics on the MCAT. Today we're taking the AAMC sample test, chemistry and physics passage number seven. Let's go ahead and get into it. Like always, I'm going to go ahead and read the passage, flowchart it out, pick out the basic sciences and the important relationships, and then show you how to answer each question systematically. So this passage says, researchers performed an experiment to investigate the thermal properties of human skin with regard to heat transfer. Hey, remember we're highlighting basic sciences, heat transfer, that's a basic science. For this purpose, an iron wire with known electric and thermal properties was mounted on a specifically designed holder and placed five centimeters away from the forearm skin. Did I say foreskin? forearm skin of a volunteer five centimeters away so um, something that I haven't really shown you very frequently is that I, I do go ahead and highlight these values just so I know where to find them because this passage is reading very physicsy and generally when something's reading very physicsy the actual questions are just algebra and so you have to go and find those numbers. So I go ahead and tell my brain where they are. Away from the forearm skin of a volunteer, the design enabled heat from the wire to be transferred to the skin. So they're just pretty much saying like, you know, whenever you hold your hands like close to a fire and you can feel it radiating, that's all they're really talking about here. Um, groundbreaking stuff, I know. At room temp, the wire had a length of four meters, diameter of four times 10 to the negative fourth meters, and a mass of four times 10 to the negative third kilos. The wire was connected in series with an ammeter. Ooh, in series, this is actually really important, right? So remember, if whenever we're talking about circuits, it's important to know if we're in series or parallel because if things are in series, then the resistance is going to be summative while the capacitance is going to be parallel while the capacitance is going to be inversely summative and then if you're talking about a parallel circuit it's the exact opposite so it's important to know those distinctions in case they ask you to solve for the resistance of a circuit the researchers selected a voltage and closed the circuit so current flowed through the circuit raising the wire's temperature so anytime i see something like voltage and current if they're mentioning both of those i'm immediately thinking ohm's law right ver v equals i r because that just gets tested so frequently it's one of the most high yield physics two sciences and so i'm always thinking in that vein because it's really really easy for you to kind of take some algebra and solve between that the values in table one were measured in five trials with different wire temps note the initial value of resistance the circuit the circuit's resistance was measured at a temperature of 293 kelvins within ohmmeter. The other values of R were calculated from the values of V and L. Okay, I don't, I don't know if that's important or not, but it, it, it's so random that I'm kind of thinking maybe that's something that's going to come up. The idea of like resistance and um, how calculable it was, or maybe why this first trial is different, something like that. So we're going through the table, and remember if you've watched our figure interpretation video, you know that I care about this right here, which says the data for thermal and electrical properties of an iron wire, and then I care about the axes. So it's essentially we're looking at the thermal and electrical properties of this iron wire. We have multiple different trials, and I'm assuming we're going to change one or two of these variables and see how that impacts the others. I don't, I'm, I don't care about this right now because they haven't asked me a question on it, so why would I waste the time to go through it right now? The change in wire length, delta L, is, ch is related to the change in temperature, delta T, by the relationship. Delta L is equal to alpha length times change in temperature, where alpha is the coefficient of thermal expansion. This is the idea that whenever you heat something, then it actually gets larger. Um, and that coefficient is a constant. A similar relationship, change of diameter, is equal to that coefficient times the diameter times the change in temperature, which describes how the diameter of a wire changes when it is heated. The constant has the same value in both equations. So if you if you note, if you look here, then you see that in these equations, length, uh, change in length and change of diameter, they look very similar with the exception of length and diameter. Um, you can actually cross out every variable. So the change in temperature stays the same, as does the expansion coefficient. And so that means that mathematically, change in length is proportional to the change in diameter. Moving on, it says the energy radiated from a heated wire each second is A, I think that's sigma, T to the fourth, where A is the surface area of the wire, and questionably sigma is 5.67 times 10 to the negative eighth joules per meter squared, second Kelvin to the fourth, 
is the Stefan Boltzmann constant. Yeah, I don't really get a ton out of that. So let's go to the questions. You notice that I didn't flow chart a ton here, and that's because you can see them posturing with all these values that they're giving you, and then they're making sure to tell you what these variables are. I'm thinking this is gonna be like a very algebra heavy question set. Um, but let's see, we pulled out some important things. Let's see how it works. Number 34. Um, right here says, what is the approximate density of the wire at 473 kilos? And then it gives us the volume of the wire. So this is a question that if you know the equation for density, you get it right. So density is equal to mass over volume, D equals M over V. And so now we just, we have our volume, right? They gave it to us here. So let's plug that in. Five times 10 to the negative seven meters cubed. And then let's grab our mass, which is here. Four times 10 to the negative third. Four times 10 to the negative third kilograms. Make sure that in your math, you have the same units as your actual answer because they can trick you there. And now you're just straight up calculating it. So you crank these numbers out and you end up with 8,000 kilograms per cubic meter. There's a couple ways to do this but we'll touch on those later in a video called Math Review. 35 says, which of the graphs best illustrates relationship between temperature and resistance? And so I'm gonna go back to this table here where we just talked about the thermal and the electrical properties of the iron wire and see if we have a relationship between temperature and resistance because when I look back at my flow chart, I didn't write one down. I would have written down that relationship. So that's one, that's one example of when those relationships are really, really helpful. But I didn't see one, so let's go ahead and go back to the numbers. I'm looking if I can find um, in temperature a steady increase. I, I want to see how that impacts resistance. And so if you look from trial one to trial two, it looks like we go up 80 kelvins. And then from trial two to trial three, we go up 100 kelvins. And from trial three to trial four, we go up another 100 kelvins. So we're kind of on to something there, right? Trial four to trial five, we go up another 100 kelvins. So if we look at these three trials, we can see that our increase in kelvins is the same. And so now we can kind of map out um, how our resistance changes with an increase in temperature because we have a steady increase in temperature. So that kind of allows us to eliminate that as one of the variables. So let's look at it. As we increase kelvins, we go from trial two to trial three with an increase of 2.6, right? And then we go from trial three to four with an increase of 2.6. Uh-oh, we on to something? Then from four to five, another increase of 2.6. So it looks like as temperature goes up 100, whoop, then that leads to an increase of 2.6 with um, the resistance, and that's consistent time over time. And so what that actually looks like on a graph would be answer choice A, right? That's a linear relationship. As temperature goes up, so does resistance at the same rate. <clears throat> 35, question 36 says, what is the minimum amount of heat energy required to increase temperature from 373 kelvins to 573 kelvins? And then it says, note, the specific heat capacity of iron is 460 joules per kilogram per or times Kelvin. So they tell you exactly what you're looking for. You're looking for heat energy. And so then you kind of rack your brain, and go, you know, which of these equations that I have memorized tells me heat energy. And that's when you get to the most ironic equation of them all. And that is Q is equal to MCAT. It's actually a delta sign. So heat is equal to mass times heat capacity times your change in temperature. So let's crank that out. Remember our mass is in our passage right here. Our heat capacity is given to us, 460 joules. Um, and I'm checking the, I'm making sure to check the units the whole time. Now a change in temperature is right here in Kelvin. So it's an increase 200. So you run the math right here and that gives you a about 370 joules, which ends up being closest to answer choice A. Now you'll notice that there's no answers that are even very close to A, and that's why rounding is huge on the MCAT. 
Uh, I mean, you can round this up to 500 if you want. That That's kind of like a big jump to me. I probably would have rounded it down to 450 in all honesty. Um, but we'll t again, we'll touch on that in a math review video that's going to be in week 12 of the, f of the full MCAT program. It's not out as of this time, but we're filming it. And the last one, question 37 says, during trial five, the wire was heated from 293 kelvins to 673 kelvins while the voltage was held constant at 28 volts. How did the current change, or how did the current through the circuit change during this time? So let's break this down. They say that our temperature went up and our voltage stayed the same. So V1 is equal to V2 at 28 volts. How did the current through the circuit change during this time? So again, when if you don't know where to start on a question, you're talking about voltage, current, resistance, that type of stuff. If you don't know where to start, start here. Because this relationship answers most of the questions. And so they say that voltage stays the same. Okay? But they're saying that our resistance... So they're saying that voltage stayed the same, but they're telling us that temperature increased. And so we have to ask ourselves, why did they tell us that? Well, remember in the first question, or the second question rather, we saw that an increase in temperature led to an increase in resistance. So increase in temperature leads to an increase in resistance. So that means that our resistance is actually going up. So in order to offset this increase in resistance, and allow our voltage to stay the same because they told us it was constant, right? What does the current have to do? It has to go down, right? To offset the increase in resistance. Okay, so now let's go through the answer choices. Answer choice A says it remained constant. No, it had to go down. B says it remained constant. No, it had to go down. C says it increased. No, it had to go down. And then D says it decreased. So you see there, you didn't even have to know the, the specific numbers. They just put these in there to make you kind of second guess yourself, or really they probably put them in there to make you waste time trying to calculate them. When in reality, they just wanted you to understand the concept. They wanted you to be able to think through the passage enough to figure out that increasing temperature increases resistance. And then they wanted you to be able to problem solve and say, well, okay, if I had this increase in resistance to keep my voltage the same, I must decrease my current. This is a big problem solving test. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure to check out the others on the channel. Leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.